Today on Engineering Newswire, we're flying tiny drones at CES, taking a spin in Mercedes' futuristic self-driving car, and 3D printing a giant head. Like a big head. He's like a DP, a 3D printing startup out of Roscoe, Illinois, invited us to the land of Lincoln to check out the 3DP 1000, a new, large format, completely open source 3D printer. The 3DP 1000 prints a meter wide and half a meter tall, with layer resolution down to 70 microns. But what I find most intriguing is that it's on open source machine which allows you to choose your own software, material, and control platform preferences. Well, as we walked into 3DP's shop, the first thing I noticed was this mysterious canvas bag covering something large and indiscernible. They printed my head. Yep, yep, they, uh, they printed my head. Here, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, that's my face. See, when we get a new 3D printer in the office to test, we have a number of open source STL files that we use to test accuracy, resolution, and speed, as well as overall quality. Well, as a result of a little time uh, spent in a shape shop booth at a trade show, my face became one of those STL files. We started with the Affinia, Taz, and even a Stratasys U prints, and then, well, and then there's this. David, well, David's head, weighs nine and a quarter pounds and was printed using the fused filament fabrication process on a heated borosilic glass bed that runs about 70 degrees C when printing PLA. No support material is needed, and the thing is almost completely solid. Well, I mean, well, except for my hole. The file is normally a pencil topper, but, uh, you know, that's one big pencil. I'm talking into my head, singing into my head. It took nearly seven days to print in two full five pound spools of PLA, but because it uses non-proprietary material, the actual material cost was only $180. I was thinking about getting a photorealistic finish on it, but that would be weird. Like, like really expensive and weird. Pat, I think I got it. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's something. Ugh. Oh. This week, Las Vegas is hosting the annual International Consumer Electronics Show, or CES, attracting major auto, aerospace, and consumer electronic companies from around the world, as well as many startups looking to showcase their new technology. So it comes as no surprise that drones are big this year. They were even given their own space at the show called the Unmanned Systems Marketplace. One of the most unique drones featured at the show is able to fit in the palm of your hand. The British technology firm, Torking Group, showcased their photography and HD video nano drone called Xano. Xano gained drone fame through a Kickstarter campaign that ends on January 8th. Originally looking for about $188,000, the company ended up raising more than 3.2 million. And honestly, I'm not that surprised since the company basically wrote on the platform of the ultimate selfie drone. Xano Drone connects directly to your smart device via onboard Wi-Fi with a range of about 50 to 100 feet and enables the user to instantly capture aerial photos. The device uses Origin GPS's Nano Hornet, which Origin GPS claims is the world's smallest GPS module. Using gesture control, you can point where you want Xano to fly and shoot videos or photos, tilt your phone left or right, forward or backwards, and Xano will follow. Even cooler is the follow me function that allows the user to choose a position and distance for Xano to maintain from your smartphone, all while avoiding obstacles. The device features a five megapixel HD video camera, can fly continuously for 10 to 15 minutes, and has a maximum speed of 25 miles per hour. The Torquing Group hopes to bring the price of its Xano to under $300, and the first devices will hopefully be shipped in June of this year. And um, you can kind of hook me up with one. I was gonna put my address down, but they said it wasn't cool, but. Lots of new technologies and innovations were displayed this week at CES. However, few were more impressive than Mercedes-Benz self-driving luxury in motion. Living up to its name, this car looks more like something out of a science fiction movie. 
The lounge-like interior features a variable seating system with four rotating chairs. The electrically powered seats also turn outwards by 30 degrees when the car doors open for easy exit. To establish contact with reality, you know, or you know, the outside world, the car uses laser projection and features six display screens integrated into the instrument panel and rear and side panels. Passengers can interact with the vehicle through gestures, eye tracking, or by actually touching the screens. But who has time for that? And look at this. It uses its light to interact with pedestrians and vehicles. Thank you. I really hope that voice comes standard. And it's even so nice as to project a crosswalk for stray men in the desert. Who does happen to be wearing suits? Please go ahead. Or it will just tell you to stop. Also, apparently the future isn't very colorful. They're just, they're just all wearing gray. Just gray, white, black. According to Dr. Dieter Zetje, Daimler AG chairman and head of Mercedes-Benz cars, we have the technology which makes autonomous driving reality in everyday traffic. We have a master plan in place to take the big leap required from getting technically feasible to commercially viable. The F-015 Luxury in Motion demonstrates where this may take us. Hopefully it's someplace warm. Please go ahead. Oh, I thanks. Thanks, Carl. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm David Manty and this has been your yeah, Engineering Newswire. Cue it!